As the silence lingered, the girls finally confessed to having drugged the drinks beforehand. One by one, the boys begin to pass out, their bodies growing limp and unresponsive. The girls wake them up, and Ivan, Mark, and Kovix suddenly find themselves bound to chairs in a dimly lit room, surrounded by flickering candles. Val and Alexis loom over the boys, their words dripping with malice, and their eyes gleaming with dark intent. Bev watches from behind, her heart racing, as she witnesses the menacing scene unfold before her for the very first time. The three boys plead for their lives, their voices echoing through the empty streets as they beg to be released. But their cries fall on deaf ears, and their captors remain unmoved. Will they ever escape this nightmare? Little did anyone know, the three girls were actually part of a secretive congregation known only as the Daughters of the Dawn. The country is being haunted by a series of murders, and it is believed that their members are responsible for them. Every week, a mysterious group is assigned to carry out unspeakable acts of violence in the name of their beliefs. As they delve deeper into their explanation, a chilling motive is revealed. Are you enjoying this video? Please consider subscribing. You would be helping me continue to create more sexy movie recaps just like this for you. Alexis grows increasingly tense in her attempts to justify and defend the beliefs of their congregation. As Ivan sat there, he could not bear to listen to her big speech any longer. With a sneer on his face, he continues to look down on their beliefs, dismissing them as nothing short of pointless and stupid. With a sudden burst of rage, Alexis plunges the sharp object into his neck. Blood gushes out of the wound as he struggles to stay alive. Slowly, she creeps towards Mark, her eyes fixed on him with a menacing glare. With a sharp object in her hand, she commands him to fall to his knees and plead for forgiveness. Mark's heart races as he realizes the danger he is in, trapped in her grasp with no escape. As Alexis raises the knife, ready to strike, Bev's hand shoots out and grabs her wrist. Wait, Bev whispers urgently. We need to talk about something. Val and Alexis cautiously trail behind her, leaving the two boys to devise a scheme for their escape. In the bathroom, Bev leans in and whispers to both of them that she wants to be the one who takes out Mark and Kovex. With a determined nod, Alexis agrees to reveal the instructions for bringing them out. But what dangers and obstacles lie ahead? Only time will tell. The two boys manage to break free and stumble upon a safe room. They hide, hoping to buy themselves more time. As the trio draws near, their footsteps growing louder and more menacing, the trapped individual realizes with a sinking feeling that there is no escape. They are cornered, trapped like a rat in a cage. The only option left is to hide to crouch down in the cramped and stuffy pantry, their hearts racing as they wait for the inevitable confrontation. Little did the girls know that the boys were lurking just behind the pantry door. Mark tends to Kovac's wounds, which he got while trying to flee from the girls. What happened to the girls? Did they catch up to him? Is Mark safe? The room is silent as Mark works to patch up Kovac's, but the tension is palpable. As time ticks away, Alexis demands that Bev locate the necessary tools to expedite their agenda of unknown intentions. The urgency in their voices suggests that time is of the essence and the consequences of delay could be dire. With hesitation, she complies as Alexis places the blame on her for the nuisance. Trembling with fear and anxiety, Bev cautiously makes her way towards the shed, her heart pounding in her chest. She knows that every second counts, and she cannot afford to lose her composure now. With bated breath, she reaches for the tools, her hands shaking uncontrollably as she tries to steady herself. As Alexis reaches for the aerosol can, a sense of foreboding washes over the house. With a quick spray by the door, chaos seems to be lurking just around the corner. Suddenly, Mark and Kovix begin to cough and gasp for air, struggling to breathe. What will happen next? Their hearts race as they hear the sound of footsteps approaching the house. They freeze, unsure of who could be coming. With bated breath, they strain to listen for any clues as to the identity of the visitor. 
The silence is deafening as they wait for the unknown intruder to reveal themselves. Alexis could not believe her eyes as she saw her stepmother, Susan, standing at the doorstep. Susan had come to retrieve a passport she needed for her trip the next day. As she prepared to depart, she leaned in close to Alexis and whispered, I had to call the police. There was a suspicious blue van parked outside with its lights on. I thought someone had broken in. Alexis's heart raced as she waited for the rest of the story. But she continued, it turned out to be a false alarm. As Susan edges towards the exit, a faint sound of shattered glass echoes from the pantry. Her instincts tell her that something is amiss, and she cautiously moves towards the source of the noise, determined to uncover the truth. Alexis insists that there is nothing there, but her guarded behavior only heightens Susan's intrigue. As Susan enters the living room, her heart races with anticipation. Suddenly, she freezes in terror as she lays eyes on Ivan's motionless form lying on the ground. With no other options left, Alexis takes a deep breath and makes a fateful decision. In one swift motion, she plunges the sharp object into her own flesh. Val's heart raced as the commotion grew louder. They had not planned on taking another life, and the unexpected turn of events left them in a state of panic. As if things could not get any more intense, the police are on their way. As chaos erupted in the house, Bev remained frozen in the shed, unable to confront what was happening. With bated breath, she sifts through the documents, her heart racing as she uncovers property titles belonging to none other than Alex's father, John Henry. But that is not all. A mysterious bag of money lies nearby, waiting to reveal its secrets. In the pantry, Mark and Kovic brace themselves for a fierce confrontation with the girls. Their weapons of choice were broken wine bottles. But little do they know that Alexis and Val have a dangerous trick up their sleeves. With a can of aerosol spray, they ignite a blazing inferno at the doorway. The stage is set for a fiery showdown. Trapped inside, the boys find themselves in a much more vulnerable position. As Susan made the call for help, little did she know that the arrival of Sheriff Dombrowski would change everything. Alexis knew she had to act fast to get the officer to leave before it was too late. Despite her charms and aliases, Dombrowski remains unfazed. He demands that Alexis produce an ID, but what happens next will leave you on the edge of your seat. Alexis makes a break for it, leaving Dombrowski to wonder, what is she hiding? As he chases her into the house, his heart races with anticipation of what he might find. Suddenly, he stumbles upon a chilling sight, satanic symbols etched into the walls and floor. But that is not all. As he cautiously makes his way into the living room, he comes face to face with a gruesome discovery. Ivan's lifeless body lying motionless on the ground. As he surveyed the scene before him, a feeling of disbelief and terror washed over him, causing him to become hyper aware of his surroundings. As he cautiously approached the pantry, he could not shake the feeling that something was off. The noises he heard were faint, but they were definitely there. With each step, his heart pounded faster and faster until he finally reached the door. Slowly, he opened it, and what he saw made his blood run cold. There, lying on the ground, were Kovix and Mark, both injured and barely conscious. Mark's plea for help was barely audible, but it was enough to send shivers down his spine. With a look of disbelief, Dombrowski slowly reaches for his handcuffs, his eyes fixed on them. Little did he know that Val was silently creeping up behind him. With lightning-fast reflexes, Val snatched his weapon and aimed it at him. A deafening shot echoed through the room as he fell lifeless to the ground. The two boys were forced to retreat back into the pantry, their fate uncertain. As soon as Alexis discovers Val's dark secret, her heart races with fear. She lunges towards Val to take the gun away, but Val resists. The two women engage in a violent struggle, their bodies thrashing and twisting in a desperate fight for control. Just as the tension reaches its peak and the weapon is about to change hands, a sudden figure emerges from the shadows. Bev materializes out of nowhere, wielding an electric trolling motor with a menacing glint in her eye. 
Her friends freeze in fear as they realize they are at her mercy. With a sly smile, she announces that she will release the boys. Are you enjoying this video? Please consider subscribing. You would be helping me continue to create more sexy movie recaps just like this for you. With a deep breath, she confronts them, determined to uncover the truth. And then, with a single sentence, Bev shatters everything she thought she knew. Her friend's leader, Alexis' father, is nothing more than a thief, stealing the donations meant for the church. The truth is out, but what will happen next? Little did they know that the man they trusted to provide them with shelter had a dark secret. Instead of fulfilling his promise, he had been using their hard-earned money to indulge in a life of luxury. The very house they were in could be a symbol of his deceit. As Alexis scolds Bev for her lack of foresight and participation in their plan, Val creeps up behind her. Suddenly, Alexis is taken by surprise and manages to knock Bev down. As Mark and Kovacs finally muster the courage to step out of the pantry, they are met with a terrifying sight. Bev, consumed by rage, wields the trolling motor with deadly force, inflicting wounds on her friends. The air is thick with tension as the two men stand frozen, unsure of what to do next. Their eyes fixed on Bev as they launch their attack. As the two boys finally catch up to them, Alexis and Val exchange a knowing glance. With a quick nod, they take off running, their hearts pounding in their chests. Little do the boys know that Bev has a secret plan up her sleeve, and it just might be enough to help the girls escape. With each passing moment, Kovic's condition deteriorates further. It is clear that he will not survive much longer without urgent medical attention. Mark's heart races as he reaches for the knife, his eyes locked on Alexis. He knows he must retrieve the car keys, but at what cost? Meanwhile, Bev frantically helps the bloody Kovacs hide in a safe corner, hoping they can stay hidden as they deal with the unknown danger lurking among their friends. The tension in the air is palpable as they all wait for what comes next. As Kovacs fights to catch his breath, he suddenly catches a glimpse of car lights shining through the window. Despite his struggles, he musters the strength to make his way towards the exit, his heart racing as he wonders who could be waiting for him outside. As he steps into the dimly lit room, his eyes scan the shadows for any sign of life. Suddenly, a figure emerges from the darkness. It is John Henry, the pastor of the Daughters of the Dawn. But as he draws closer, a shocking realization dawns on him. This man is also Alex's father. John Henry cautiously approaches Kovacs, who appears to be in a state of utter distress. As they engage in casual conversation, John Henry cannot help but sense that something is deeply troubling Kovacs. With a hushed tone, he orders Kovacs to make his way to the car, dial 9, 1, 1, and deliver the weapon into his outstretched hand. Kovacs obediently follows the instructions, but as he approaches the figure, a sudden realization dawns on him. Could it be? Is that the renowned pastor himself? John Henry's eyes narrow as he catches a flicker of recognition in the man's gaze. Without hesitation, he raises his weapon and fires a single shot, the sound echoing through the empty streets. The man crumples to the ground, lifeless. In the pitch black house, the final survivors strain to remain hushed, knowing that silence is their only hope for staying alive. Every breath hangs in the balance, as the tiniest of actions could tip the scales towards either life or death. The air is thick with anticipation, every sound magnified to a deafening level. One wrong move could mean the difference between survival and certain doom. As Bev cautiously approaches the light switch, little does she know that Val is lurking in the shadows, ready to pounce at any moment. Will Bev be able to turn on the light and reveal Val's true intentions, or will Val succeed in keeping the room shrouded in darkness? The tension mounts as Bev's hand inches closer to the switch. With no other option, they began to pummel each other despite their close bond. Suddenly, Bev produced a flame and ignited Val's hair, which was drenched in hairspray. What was her plan? How would this help them restore power? The tension was palpable. As Mark reaches for his car keys in the bedroom, Alexis suddenly lunges at him, 
causing a violent struggle to erupt within the room. Kovacs manages to make it back inside the house, but little does he know that danger still lurks in the shadows. Suddenly, Bev appears, ready to save the day. With his last breath, he desperately implores Bev to do whatever it takes to save Mark, a final testament to their unbreakable bond. In a matter of minutes, a life-or-death situation unfolds in the bedroom. Mark's hands are tightly wrapped around Alexa's neck, suffocating her. Suddenly, John Henry appears, and without hesitation, he pulls out his weapon and takes aim. The sound of a gunshot echoes through the room as Mark falls to the ground. The fate of Alexis remains unknown. John Henry's eyes narrowed as he glared at his daughter. He could not believe her incompetence. How could she let things spiral out of control like this? He knew what he had to do now. Cover up the mess she had made. But how many more bodies would he have to dispose of before it was all over? With tears streaming down her face, Alexis desperately tries to explain that it is not her fault. But her father's stern expression tells a different story. He knows they have to make sacrifices to get out of the trouble she has caused the group. What will they have to give up? And how much worse will things get before they can finally escape the consequences of Alexis's actions? As John Henry's hands tighten around Alexis's neck, the room falls silent. Suddenly, a figure emerges from the shadows and strikes John Henry with a swift blow to the head. He crumples to the ground, unconscious. Who is this mysterious savior? And what will happen next? As Bev basked in the relief of being thanked for saving Alexis, she suddenly felt a tight grip around her neck. Alexis's demeanor had shifted, and her eyes glinted with a manic intensity. Bev's heart raced as she struggled to break free, wondering what had caused this sudden change in her rescuer. With a sudden burst of adrenaline, Bev hurls her attacker out the window in a desperate act of self-preservation. Only then does she rush to Mark's aid, her heart racing with the fear of what might happen next. In a frenzied panic, they bolted from the house, abandoning the lifeless bodies in their wake. Without a second glance at the chaos that consumed the area, the two hastily jumped into the car, their hearts racing with anticipation. As they turn the corner, their hearts skip a beat as they come face to face with Alexis, standing boldly in their path, thirsting for more violence. With no other options left, Bev must make a split-second decision and take action before it is too late. The next day, the air is thick with tension as news reports about the incident begin to broadcast on television. John Henry, the sole survivor, trembles as he recounts the horrors he witnessed. His voice quivers as he reveals the unthinkable. His own daughter, Alexis, has joined a satanic cult known as We Summon the Darkness. He knows that this is just the beginning of a downward spiral into darkness and despair. As Bev rummages through the medical supplies at the gas station, she notices the owner staring intently at the television screen, the news blaring in the background. What could have captured his attention so completely? And why did she suddenly feel a sense of unease creeping up her spine? As she prepares to depart, she leans in close and whispers a warning in his ear. Remember, not everything is as it seems. The old man furrows his brow, unsure of what she means by this cryptic message. As they speed away from the town, Bev and Mark cannot shake the feeling that something is following them. The darkness that had engulfed the town seems to have latched onto their car, and they cannot escape its grasp. They drive faster, but the feeling of impending doom only grows stronger. What will happen to them? 